Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over how we can use the Kaplan-Meier estimator to estimate a survival function or a survival curve. So I'm going to go over that using this example which has sample data for 10 observations. So the Kaplan-Meier estimator for doing an empirical estimation of the survival function at time t is equal to the product of xj less than or equal to t of 1 minus dj over yj. And I'm going to define x of j as the distinct event times, or you, if you're thinking of this as survival versus death, you can think of this as the number of distinct death times. So I'm going to write distinct event, aka death times. DJ is going to be the number of death or event occurrences at X of J. And YJ is going to be equal to follow-up times that are as least as big as XJ. So basically at time XJ, how many observations in your sample have survived at least up to that time or past that time? So T of I is the follow-up time and the follow-up time has to be greater than or equal to X of J. So we have that formula and then let's go ahead and get into estimating the survival function. The first thing I'm going to do for the observations is I'm going to order them. So we have have 2, 2, 3, and this observation is censored because it has a plus next to it. Then we have 5, 5 plus, 7, 9, 2 sixteens, and 18 is the last observation and it's censored. And then I'm just going to estimate the survival curve which changes at each time where a death or an event occurs. So I'm going to start from the smallest observation and go to the largest observation. And on the side I'm going to write a function of what the values would be. So the first time an event occurs for the sample data is at time 2. So I'm going to estimate the survival curve at s of 2. And then I'm just going to plug into the formula. So we want all x of j is less than or equal to 2. And then we want to plug in 1 minus dj over yj. So 2 is the smallest time at which an event occurs. So we only have to consider 2 in our first formula. And then we see that we defined d of j as the number of events that occur at x of j exactly. So at time 2, exactly 2 events occur. So that's going to be 1 minus 2 over y of j. And y of j is basically follow-up times that are greater than or equal to 2. So all 10 of our observations, since 2 is the smallest time at which an event occurs, all our other observations, the follow-up time or the survival time is larger than 2. So all 10 observations are greater than or equal to 2, which means all the 10 observations have lasted at least up to time 2. So our denominator is going to be 10. So for s of 2, the estimated survival curve is going to be, or survival function, is going to be 1 minus 0.2 or 0.8. So then we can plug in into the function. So a survival curve before when time t is less than 2, it's going to be equal to 1. So no events have occurred prior to time 2. And then when t is greater than or equal to 2, we have that the estimated curve is going to be equal to 0.8. So we're done with time two. At time three, the observation is censored. So if we were to check this, the formula would be one minus, and then zero would be in the numerator for this fraction because no deaths or events occur at time three. This observation is just censored. So if we were to try to estimate the survival function at three, this would just be one minus zero, which would give you one. So we only estimate the survival curve at actual event times. We don't take into consideration observations that were censored only. So we're going to move past 3 and go to 5, which has one event occurrence and one censored observation. So we're going to do the estimate of s of 5 and then just plug in t is equal to 5. Because 2 is less than 5, we also have to take into consideration the previous events that have occurred. So this is going to be equal to 0.8 for x of j less than or equal to 2. And then we have to also consider the observations at x of j less than or equal to 5. So this is going to be 0.8 times 1 minus the number of events that occur at t is equal to 5, which is we have one observation and one censored observation. So that's just going to be 1. And then 
over all the follow-up times that were as least as big as five. So that's going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our estimated survival function at s of 5 is going to be 0.8 times 1 minus 1 over 7, which is approximately 0.857. And this multiplied is approximately equal to 0.69. So we have 0.69 as part of our function. So this is going to be the value when t is greater than or equal to 2 and less than 5. And then when t is greater than or equal to 5, the survival function is going to be estimated at 0.69. We're done with observations at t is equal to 5. The next time an event occurs is at 7. So we're just going to repeat doing the similar steps. So the survival function for t of 7 is going to be the product of xj less than or equal to 7, 1 minus dj over yj. We have to consider all the events that have occurred before 7, so less than 7. So we're going to do 0.69 times 1 minus the events that occur at 7. So there's just one event that occurs at that time. And then all the follow-up times greater than or equal to that time, which are 5. So it's going to be 0.69 times 1 minus 1 over 5. So this is 0.69 times 0.8, which is approximately 0.55. So the estimated survival curve is going to be 0.69 between 5 and less than 7. And then when t is greater than or equal to 7, it's going to go down to 0.55. The next event occurs at 9. So at this point, we're just repeating the same process over and over again. So this is going to be 0.55 times 1 minus 1 over 4, and that gives approximately 0.41. So when t is greater than or equal to 9, the survival ship goes down to 0.41. Then we have two events occurring at 16. So that's going to be 0.41 times 1 minus 2, because there are two events that occur at this time, over 3, and that gives 0.14. And then the last observation is censored. So this is going to be true between 16 and less than 18. And then since the last observation is censored, we're not going to plug it in because we only plug in times where a death occurs or an event occurs to change the actual proportion. And for t greater than 18, we can either do a tail correction. So sometimes people correct this and say that any value that's greater than the last value is going to go to zero. Or sometimes people correct it and just use the t max value. So sometimes people just say this is going to continue on to 0.14 and never reach zero. Or some people say that this value is undefined. Since this is a censored observation, I'm just going to say that this continues on to be 0.14. So now this is our final answer, and this is a discrete estimator of the survival function. And if you plotted the estimated survival curve, you would get a discrete function. So you would get something like this, where you have closed dots on the left limits and open circles on the right-hand limits, and then this continue on to infinity. And this type of function is called a Cadillac function or sometimes it's called an RCLL, which means right continuous with left limits. And we're done with this problem.